All right, guys, we have a little bit of a treat here. Uh, if you're listening to this on audio, it'll probably uh, start off with our bonus content intro music because this kind of came out of nowhere, and I'm super excited that it came out of nowhere because uh, from what I've heard, this is an Inroads exclusive. We're the first one that uh, Pat brought this to. Uh, Pat Lysite, who is known for Kara Games, who... Uh, not only is the creator of the great game commissioned, also is the first the first game company to put the Inroads approved seal on a box. Woohoo! We're so, glad we got it in the first place. Oh yeah, no, it was there was no doubt after playing Commission that I wanted to, to give that to you guys. So I'm excited that you're actually using it. But uh, Pat is here actually to talk about a brand new game. Uh, I believe is it going to go to Kickstarter? Is that what the story is, or are you just coming out with it? Yes, the timing hasn't totally finalized yet, but we're hoping for around February 7th, which is the, also the first time that date has been announced publicly. So <laughs> all kinds of exclusives oh, going man. on here on Inroads. They're just flying left, right, and sideways. All right, um, so before we get into all of that, uh, just in case somebody doesn't know, in case this is the first time they're hearing from you, uh, one, you can probably find a link, and I'll probably put it in the video on the comments and in the audio in, when I post that. Uh, you can probably find a link to our first interview with Pat. But just for the people who may not have heard about you before, might not have heard of Kara Games or Commissioned or any of the other things that you've done, just give a short version of what you guys are about. Sure. So uh, we're Kara Games, and you know, when I say we, it's my wife and I, a small independent publishing company. Uh, we currently have uh, two titles, but our our mission, if you will, is to uh, build games that create joy by developing relationships with God and people. And so we're all about creating games that uh, cover issues or history about Christianity, but do so from an angle that is uh, highly approachable for non-Christian people. Uh, so it's, it's all about creating games that you can get together and build relationships uh, with uh, people that you don't know or people that you enjoy spending time with and, and can explore some of these issues that other uh, game companies aren't, aren't willing to engage with from a, uh, you know, a discussion kind of standpoint. So we have two titles right now, like I said. The first one is Commissioned, and it is a historical look at the first 150 years of church. It's a, a cooperative, about a one-hour, two- to six-player game where you're doing a little bit of deck building, that simulates your own personal uh, faith walk, but then you're working together to overcome the trials that the early church encountered uh, in the first 150 years. So, you know, fighting against Rome, overcoming uh, religious persecution and natural disasters and all that kind of stuff. Five different scenarios in the box. Uh, so there's lots of game uh, in there, and, and that is available. It came out in January of 2016. So it's been out for a year. Uh, we've sold about 2,500 copies uh, and are excited about how things are going with Commissioned. Our second game is called Three Seeds. It's a quick uh, light strategy card game. I call it deceptively simple uh, because there's actually a, a, a quite a bit of strategy involved in, in set collection and you know long game versus short game. It's only 30 to 40 minutes, but... Do, are you doing stuff to get points now, or are you trying to develop a, a large end game bonus stuff? So that's uh, super easy to pick up and play. You can learn it in three minutes, but still have uh, lots of fun with it. And it's good for uh, gamers to pick up because it's uh, entertaining for gamers. It will you know give you some interesting choices, and you'll understand a lot of what's going on. But if you have uh, kids or you have family members who aren't into gaming, super easy to learn, quick play time. Uh, and and will be very approachable to them. So that one hit the shelf at the end of November. It's brand new. Uh, and actually, uh, on the last weekend of January, there's going to be a splash where uh, we have people who are going to be demoing commissioned in stores in, I think, 26 states on the last weekend of January. So uh, you could head to our Facebook page and, and get some intro uh, details about where Three Seeds is going to be demoed, but we're excited for the uh, the publicity that it's going to come out the last weekend in January. 
That's awesome. I Speaking of publicity, I was happy to see that when uh, the Dice Tower folks started putting out their top tens, I believe it was Sam Healy that, that gave commission a pretty decent spot on that top ten. Yeah, he, he's been a huge advocate for commissioned and, and is uh, I think now commissioned is in his top ten deck builders, his top ten co-ops. Uh, it was his number six game of 2016, and it's his number 30 game of all time. So we're super, super excited uh, and uh, thankful for the help that Sam has given us in getting the word out about Commissioned. Sam's good people. Mm -hmm. So uh, without any further ado, tell us a little bit about this new game uh, that people can start getting excited about. Well, we've talked about it in a couple different places over the last two years because it, we've been working on it for about two and a half years. Uh, it's called Unauthorized. It's a 6 to 12 player, 30 minute social deduction style game about the underground church. Uh, and so each player gets a role that is uh, publicly advertised. Everybody knows what your role is. But your role gives you a unique ability to influence the other players. Uh, and the goal is to sway most of the players to your side. You're either loyal to the state or loyal to the church. Uh, but how that actually works is that uh, the players have cards in their hands or as the game plays, some of them will be played out, uh, public information to the people around you. Uh, and the, the cards that you have determine your loyalty, which means that as your cards change, as people use their different role powers, your loyalty during the game can actually shift. Uh, and you know your play style will have to adjust to which uh, team you're trying to help win as you play the game. And so the game is really about capturing the, the uncertain experience of the people in the underground church or in the state watching the underground church kind of uh, come into power, if you will. It's not really about power, but, you know, swaying the other people around you. So it's uncertainty. There's faith. There's boldness. Who do you trust? How long can you trust that person? Because they might have been loyal to you, but now they're not. Things have happened, you know, this, the police have cracked down and they've been thrown in prison. There's a lot of uh, interesting uh, things going on and choices. But again, like Commission, it's not really about the theology of the church. It's about the human experience that the people in the church are living. And we're trying to kind of explore uh, that space and, and let people get a feel for what it would be like to live in an underground church because that's that's really where the church has lived for most of its time. I think we have this uh, false idea of what it would be like to, to live in an, a church in America because, you know, the church hasn't had to be underground for so long. But that is the reality for many Christians across the world and, and has been for a long, long time. So, I mean, all the way back to the earliest apostles. So it's kind of, it's a very interesting experience uh, and uh you know, human dilemma uh, that uh, we're trying to capture here in, in a quick uh, social deduction style gaming. I, I've always said that I've been surprised that no one has tapped into the idea of the early, ch the, the underground church for uh, any kind of gaming situation, because, you know, it's, as, as we've talked about before, you know, Christian games have been around for a while. It's not a, a new phenomenon, but to seeing the the deep strategic versions that you know gamers who aren't Christians would actually enjoy playing is a fairly new phenomenon. So, I, I'm I'm really happy to hear that this is what you guys are going for. There's the big thing I would I would ask is there's a lot of social deduction games out right now. That's it's been a huge trend lately. There's been a ton of them, and a lot of them are really good. And so, what I want to know is is that what really sets uh, this game apart from the other social deduction games that are out there. Uh, it seems like the idea that your role can change in the the part of the in the process of the game is a pretty decent you know example of that. Yeah, exactly. So uh, your it's not necessarily your role that changes, but your loyalty. So which team are you playing for can shift. And I off the top of my head, I don't know another game uh, that that manages that. The other. Uh, the other uh, thing that that commission does uh, that we designed it specifically to do that other uh, social deduction games don't are the the lying aspect of the game. So you do not have to lie uh, when you play unauthorized. Um, you know there are certain actions you can take on your turn and, and all kinds of different stuff. But we specifically designed the mechanics where you don't have to lie to succeed 
as you play unauthorized. And, and there's, you know, we could have that debate, uh, and I have had that debate with, with play testers as they go. Uh, it doesn't say that you don't have to lie. You certainly can if, if you want to. You, the rules are just kind of moot uh, as far as, as talking. You can take the talking uh, where you'd like to uh, as you play the game. But you, your success in the game is not dependent on your ability to lie, which I know makes uh, a lot of gamers that I've seen, you know, play resistance or coup or or those style, you know, werewolf style games can make you know, just makes some people very awkward and and takes them out of the game from the get go. So we decided as we approached kind of this genre that that was one thing that we wanted to do different. Um, we wanted to create, you know, this atmosphere where there's a lot of unknown, and you can just act or do whatever you want to do and, and allow people to try to guess what you're doing, but you're not forced necessarily um, to say something that isn't true. Well, that it, it's interesting because, like you said, I've, I've had experiences where a lot of people shy away from social deduction games because they're like, I'm a terrible liar. Mm -hmm. Uh, in fact, my wife is the first one to say that she has absolutely no pro no poker face whatsoever, and it's it's true. I I can usually spot when she's when she's trying to pull a fast one on me real quick. That's why she doesn't even try to like surprise me with anything anymore. So it does seem to open up to a, a wider audience and kind of let some people come in. Uh, you talk about play testing. What are some of the experiences that you've had? What are some things that have maybe changed or some things that maybe got suggested in play testing that you didn't see? Well, it's, uh, it's been an interesting, uh, development for this game. I think we've gone through <clears throat> seven full iterations of the rule set, uh, since we started, you know, seven kind of go back to the, go back to ground zero and kind of retype the rules uh, to tighten things up. We've had a, a good team of, of people scattered out, actually uh, most in the U.S., but a couple of internationals, uh, international guys as well, and, and they've been uh, very faithful to stick with us through uh, what's been a much longer process than I think I envisioned when we started. Um, but I, I think that most of the struggle with our playtesting has boiled down to trying to create a game that plays in about the same length of time and communicates the same uh, level of player interaction um, as you as the number of players change. So as you go from six players all the way up to 12 players and and you know there'll be some stretch goals and, and we'll frame things a little different but the, the design covers six to 12 players and when you vary uh, you know when you double the size of an already large playing group, it creates some interesting design uh, constraints in, from a time perspective and, and how, what actions do you give players and, and their choices and how does that affect the larger group. And so it's been, it's been challenging to work through that. Uh, but what I think we've seen is that we, we have ended up on a, uh, with a system that plays very quickly uh, but also evokes a lot of... Uh, well, why did you do that kind of thinking uh, as you play? Or like, oh, I totally thought, you know. Uh, so it was, it's, it's been a fun experience to explore that space um, a, as we've gone through the, uh, the testing on uh, Authorized. So one thing that, that is another kind of foible of social deduction games, well, at least the granddaddy of them, a lot of them have kind of gone away from this, but the granddaddy is Werewolf slash Mafia. And one thing that is a detraction from that game for a lot of people is the idea of player elimination. Is this something that there's any kind of player elimination, or is there something that, or is everyone participating throughout the entirety of the game? So there is the possibility, and it is only a possibility, that one player can be eliminated during the game. So uh, it, how we have framed that is that the there are police characters there are pastor characters, and then most of the group will be neutral characters. So the the uh, police are fixed to the are loyal to the state, kind of driving people that way. And their power is to imprison and, uh, and interrogate kind of other players uh, to reveal more information about their cards. The pastors, you know, subtly trying to influence uh, by affecting different cards that are face up, different people toward uh, the church. 
so they're fixed as well. But most of the players that play will be neutral players where their loyalty is totally determined by the cards they have in their hand or that are displayed out in front of them. The police, however, can choose once during the game, and again, a game lasts you know about 30-ish minutes, plus or minus, depending on the, the players that are playing with you. Um, and they, they can kill, they can execute one person during the game. Um, but it doesn't happen that often uh, because the, w the w way we've written it, if they execute someone who turns out to be loyal to the state, then you know that's just bad for them because they've killed somebody that was working toward their majority. If they execute someone that was loyal to the church, then that person, as their kind of last words, gets to remove some cards uh, from other people to influence them toward the church. You know, watching this person die or be martyred has influenced them, you know, in, in a way that's positive to the church. So there's some pretty heavy penalties for the state for executing people. So I would say that uh, it does exist, and thematically it should exist, I think, in a game about the underground church that is definitely a part of the experience. Uh, however, it probably only happens in one out of every four play-tested games. It, it happens rarely, and usually when it does, it's because the state is very far behind uh, and and th th they're trying to claw their way back into the game. It, it sounds like it's it's weird to connect these two, but uh, one game that I, I think has been interesting that, that there are certain roles that have, you know, certain powers above and beyond what everybody else has uh, is Secret Hitler. I have not a, played that one. It's another social deduction game where people have, you know, there are two particular individuals each round that have like a certain kind of power to them. And one of the options is to execute somebody, but that can, can literally change the game. So you don't always want to pull that trigger literally. So it, it's interesting mm. that, that you're bringing in that element of, yeah, you can do it. It's, but... <laughs> it's, it's valid and it, it can be a game changer. It could turn things in your favor. It could also destroy you. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that that's, I think it's just, as you look through historical examples, uh, or even modern day examples of underground churches, you know, execution, martyrdom, essentially become, can definitely cut both ways, uh, whether you're working against the church or you're working, uh, you know, for the, ch uh, for the state to, uh, or for the church. It's, it's, you know, it can have a powerful effect in an unpredictable way. And that's, that was kind of what we were trying to capture with that. So yes, player elimination is in the game, but it happens rarely. And when it does, uh, fortunately, the, the playtime is pretty short. So when it happens, it normally happens in like the fourth round, which is the last round of play. Uh, and so if you're out of the game, you're not out of the game for very long. I, I've, I've often found that, that I'm much more tolerant of player elimination when the game doesn't last too long, because that way, you know, you can still enjoy it and it doesn't overstay its, you know, overstay its welcome that you're like, oh, I'm just sitting here. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. So you, you mentioned some concepts of stretch goals. I know it's early. I know you, you're still working on getting everything together for the Kickstarter, but is there any kind of like preview we can get of some of the things you hope to see happen if, if you meet those goals? Well, what we'd like, eventually, uh, what we'd like to get uh, is to a full 12 player version uh, of the game. It kind of, the game is built in stages. There's a six to seven player deck. Uh, then 8 to 9, you add some more cards, and then 10 to 12, you add some more cards. So we'll, we'll probably stage some stretch goals along those lines. Uh, we'd really like to get to the full 12 because that adds in all of the different roll cards that we've tested. So, uh, you know, each player has a unique roll action that gives them a unique way to influence the other players in the game, and, and we would like to put all of that uh, into the box. Also, we've taken the time with our artist to do double-sided illustrations for each roll card so that there's a male and a female version nice. of each roll. That doesn't affect how the game plays, but it's something that we thought was important to do. Uh, and like I said, we, uh, or we've talked about here, um, the, the game is, is built from an art perspective to kind of be timeless and locationless. So 
there's art, you know, the different characters that are in the game are scattered from all over the world. They're, you know, American, European, African, uh, Chinese, uh, you know, in Indian, uh, all kinds of different uh, illustrations of ca different characters. And, and a lot of that is, uh, you know, to be honest, is, does not affect the way the game plays at all. But we would like to put all of that goodness into the box. So there'll probably be some role art unlocks. There'll probably be some player level unlocks. There'll probably be um, a card quality because this is a card driven game. And we're working with our manufacturer to identify the different levels uh, of uh, card quality, uh, hoping to end up at about a 350 GSM casino black core quality. Uh, you know, card type so that the cards really stand up well, the shuffling uh, over time. And, and, and that's, you know, those are the things that we look, we want to put, you know, we've spent two and a half years designing this game and we want to put all the goodness into the box. It's just a, an issue of, you know, being able to get over the finish line from a, a funding perspective. So the, what, what I can't, the, you know, final goals and all that kind of stuff, I can't talk to you yet because we're still working through the details with our manufacturer. But the game is uh, expected to be $15 uh, is our basic uh, level on Kickstarter, which uh, is uh, it's, it's pretty cheap. Um, it's just cards in the box, uh, and we're, we're hoping that people will uh, join us and, and give us a shot uh, at $15. And then also, if people have missed out on our other games, we'll, you know, we'll have those available as add-ons uh, to ship out as well. Uh, which is important uh, for our company, you know, just trying to highlight the visibility. That's been probably the biggest struggle over the last couple of years is just getting our name out there as a new publisher and, and as a publisher that has kind of a, a niche market within the board game world. You know, as, as much as we have designed our games uh, for Christians and non-Christians, and, and they're playable by everybody, doesn't matter what your background is, uh, you know, our themes are going to appeal much more uh, to Christians, and that's just the reality of the situation. So, anytime we can get out there and and uh, tell some you know new people who we are and and what we're about, we're excited about that opportunity. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I I think fifteen dollars is definitely an approachable price tag. Uh, it's definitely in a world that's filled with eighty dollar miniatures heavy board games on Kickstarter. <laughs> you know, finding fifteen bucks is a lot easier ask. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I hope if nothing else, I hope you get to the the level that you can get all that the inclusive artwork and everything in there because that's something that uh, it's only been fairly recently that I've seen publishers kind of looking at that and realizing that that's a thing because for for the longest time it's always been you know you know the beefcake barbarian dude and that's it so it's nice to to see that more and more companies are trying to take that initiative that says people want to see themselves in the games that they're playing, especially games that are set in a, a modern real world context. They want yeah. to see themselves in it. And I think if nothing else with this theme, especially it's very fitting that you want to try and make people see that this could be them, that, that they have, you know, every opportunity to have this be their experience too. Yeah. So it's it. I'm really hoping you get that. <laughs> yeah, it, it it was fun from an art perspective because uh, the 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 story that's being told is kind of a timeless story because it could be represented at any any time uh, since you know Jesus died and resurrected. So it's it was interesting. We ended up with kind of a 1940s propaganda ish feel to oh, the I art. I love it. I love so it. So it's it's not World War Two. Uh, but it is is that kind of you know like I want you for the U.S. Army you know kind of poster kind of feel where it's you know the the big brother state kind of oppressing the the and you can be on either side you can you know you right. either support the church or you can crush the church you know however uh, it ends up you know your loyalty cards end up shaking out but uh, that's kind of the the art style and message we've gone through and so it doesn't locate it in one place it doesn't uh, you know, locate it in one culture. Uh, and we've specifically tried to, or tried to, uh, you know, avoid any of those links by opening up with the role art. Uh, you know, all all the different uh, cultures that have experienced this uh, as the church has expanded across the face of the globe. 
Well, I'm, I'm really excited about this. I'm really looking forward to seeing this Kickstarter and hoping to see it continue to succeed because this sounds awesome. You guys do very good work. And uh, there's a reason why that, that we always try to put you out there whenever we can, because we want to encourage people to go out and experience good games that have, you know, biblical slash Christian life themes that aren't, you know, hokey and you need to have a thorough knowledge of the Bible to play. Uh, that's always been my my weirdness when it comes to Christian games is that they say, oh, yeah, you should play this with your non-Christian friends. But if you've never heard a Christianese discussion or never <laughs> never yeah. opened up a Bible, you have no idea what's going on here. So how are you playing this with non-Christians? Yeah, that, it, that none of that is required. These games won't make you feel stupid. Uh, they're not trivia games. You know, they're not uh, address uh kind of games are not you don't even need to know anything about stories it's a, it's more about the human experience and the, and the game recreates that for you so we certainly think that uh, you know this will be another you know great fit for 6 to 12 is just an awkward number if you have 6 to 12 people in your house you know what are you going to what are you going to play you know if you're sitting down for a family reunion you got to have something that's fast something that has uh, it's easily adaptable to a bunch of different players or if you're getting together with a youth group, or if you're getting together with a Bible study, or you're just getting together with a you know a game group, and you have an awkward amount of people, uh, this this you know will fill a gap uh, from a uh, you know a game uh, need kind of way, but also have a unique theme. I mean, you're just not going to find it anywhere else. And so we're very excited. Again, we're hoping for around February seventh uh, for the launch, um, and w you know we're going to need. You know, somewhere something between two and three hundred people probably to to get us over the finish line, and and we've got we got there with commission. It was uh, we did successfully fund three seeds, although it came all the way down to the wire on the last day. So we're hoping with unauthorized uh, to get out in front of this and and really uh, bring in uh, a bunch of people and and hopefully uh, get this game uh, out there um, into the hands of gamers as as quickly as we can. Uh, uh, tentatively, we're looking. You know, the Kickstarter page will probably say something like November or October uh, of 2017. But we are ho uh, hoping, uh, like we have with our other campaigns, to deliver uh, before that, uh, so that you know, guys will people will have this in their hands. You know, uh, late you know fall kind of time frame, uh, so that you know it's it's out and, and available. We're excited about it. We're doing weekly posts on our Facebook page to kind of bring some visibility to this, but we need everybody's help uh, to get the word out so that the uh, the full network is engaged as we get closer to the Kickstarter date. Awesome. Well, again, we'll be praying for you guys, hoping everything goes well, and we will definitely be watching this. Thanks, Pat, for coming in. And uh, guys, go out, find what you can, go on this Facebook page. I'll put a link to it in all the, ways, all the places I post this. And uh, that way you can find out more information as it comes about. When this Kickstarter goes live, definitely check it out. It's only 15 bucks, guys, and it's going to be a really interesting game. So check it out. Thanks for having me, Mike.